Hi guys, thanks for joining us on a This Versus That. Today we're gonna to be comparing the AIM Solo and Apex Pro to two of the new kids on the block, the Garmin Catalyst and the Race Box Mini. In the industry of motorsports, there's lots of lap timers and track coaches available, and these are the most commonly found ones, and these are the new kids on the block. So we're just gonna go over a couple of features, mainly regarding setup and initial impressions. So first we have the AIM Solo 2, which is by far the standard lap timer. Inside the box, we have the actual unit itself. And underneath that, we get a quick start manual and then a couple stickers and of course the power supply units. Um, one is a cigarette lighter, the other one's a wall unit. Next, we have the Apex Pro Track Coach. Similar to the AIM Solo 2, it's mostly been simplified into a quick user guide here. And underneath that, we have the hardware itself and the charging cable. And then a wipe there just for attaching the actual platform onto your car. With the Garmin Catalyst, we notice there's quite a few more components in the box. We start with the first layer, which we have the camera and the actual base unit itself which is a full color LCD, it's pretty sweet. Underneath that, we have some stickers, a manual, and then once again, beneath that, we find all the miscellaneous cables. It does include a cable for using with your cigarette lighter as well as one for hard wiring into the vehicle. And then we have the suction cup mount and the actual base charging unit as well. And last but not least, we have the Race Box Mini. Inside the Race Box Mini, we have the unit itself. An attachment pad. And then the pretty typical quick start guide. So we took all these devices to the racetrack with the intention of all testing them back to back, but we had a couple mishaps that kept us from completing that. So first off, the AIM Solo. The AIM Solo, by far the easiest to use. It's a tremendously accurate lap timer and it takes about 10 or 15 seconds to get going. You simply attach it to a suction cup mount, put it in the car, turn it on. It'll automatically detect the closest track and it'll start running. While we love the AIM Solo, we do find it lacks a little bit in the driver coaching department. It does offer good lap time tracking to a very high accuracy level and also offers predictive lap timing, but doesn't necessarily make it easy to figure out why you've achieved a specific lap time. Next, we have the Apex Pro Gen 2. Now, this is a slight revision from the original one that we've been using for years. However, the improvements are fairly subtle, but quite noticeable. One of the more positive aspects of this unit is that its primary goal is track coaching. While you can mount your cell phone on your dash and watch lap times click by, the primary use of this is to watch the live feedback to allow you to improve your driving as opposed to just see your lap time. That being said, there's only support for the iOS devices, specifically the 13 plus. The Apex Pro Track Coach is also available with the LTP service, which adds a ton of features to the system like video and predictive lap timing. On top of that, an OBD2 cable is available as a separate item. The Garmin Catalyst appears to be the industry's best all-in-one option that is available currently. It does offer video, track coaching via audio, as well as data review after the fact. The Garmin does have a couple downsides. First and foremost, the battery on board does not power the entire unit, so it must be hardwired or plugged into your cigarette lighter to use. For us, this meant we couldn't use it this weekend because we weren't aware of that and we brought a race car that did not have a cigarette lighter. So we'll be revisiting this one later. The Race Box Mini is a small compact device that's very easy to set up via its app and it does support both Android and iOS platforms. That being said, we did have a hard time maintaining a Bluetooth connection to this device and we read up that a lot of folks who were using Androids had similar problems. It does appear that it works better with iOS devices, but we weren't able to test that while we had it out. If you found this useful, please definitely like and follow our pages, and we'll be sure to update you on the performance side of these devices in our next video.